I S U P K. The images of the situation in Del Rio moved the controversial group Israelite School of UPK to mobilize their car caravan when they were allegedly turned away in Del Rio and they headed to Eagle Pass. We came around to the Mexico side. Now we're in Mexico to give our brothers the resources that we have for them. After an hour plus trip, the caravan made it to this park in Ciudad Acuña, traveling through an area with a State Department travel warning level four for violence on the Mexican side due to the cartels. Being in a dangerous situation, that's being black, Hispanic or Native American. I mean, we'll, you know, our lives are dangerous. I'd rather die like a man than live like a coward as a ghetto up in heaven and the sours. Black power, uh, 144,000. I'm just trying to make 144,000. 144,000. I'm just trying to make 144,000. One body, one face, one lord. Feel like I can take over the world with one sword. 144,000 men on one accord. Not being in this army is something. Ain't a four degree niggas across the board Ain't no suckers round us You was looking for the truth Well that's how you found us Now it's time to lace your boots up We got the order from the king Round the troops up Let's go to war and die defending this nation If we gotta ain't no stopping us now The chosen people love the power Standing strong like a man Cause in our camp it ain't no cowards Hundred forty four grand Nigga is step before the sign Rather die like a man White School of Universal Practical Knowledge On 1 West 125th Street Hall New York and the Commanding General Yohana. We are not affiliated with any other Hebrew Israelite group or Christian organization on the face of the earth. Since 1969, we've been teaching the truth of the Bible, and the truth is that the so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians are the true Jews according to the Bible, and that our oppressor is the devil that the Bible speaks of. That's right. These are not my words, but these words come from the scripture itself. These words come from the scripture, which is our constitution. The U.S. Constitution or the, 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 the Magna Carta, it has nothing to do with the people that are on this sign. The people that are on this sign are called uh, uh, what the Most High calls his own. His own particular peculiar people. We are set apart. We are not Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's what you put the, the name on us. We are uh, the, the 12 tribes of, of Israel, the chosen people of the Most High. And just like we have, just like the Most High has a chosen people, he has a chosen leader. And that chosen leader is Christ. Every, everything that you know about Christ has been lies and false, falsehoods. Why? To, to teach us nothing but white supremacy. This side that we have, that, that we have down here, the, the image of Christ that we have, it, uh, have in the world that is circulating throughout the world has nothing to do with what the scripture actually says. The scripture actually describes who and what Christ is. They actually describe his characteristics. And we're about to prove the Christian church wrong on how Christ is. Read what you got. The book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 3. Everybody knows that Christ is, is under, if you don't know, Christ is under, is under uh, the Most High God. The Most High God is, is put his spirit on Christ. Christ emulates the Most High. So whatever the Most High is, whatever God is, so is Christ, his characteristics. And this is what the scripture says about the Most High. The book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 3, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. If you translate that from the Hebrew, it's, it's saying Yahweh. Yahweh in the Hebrew, God, the almighty power, is a man. Not only is he a man, uh, uh, but he is a man of war. Right. Everything that we learn in the Christian church about, about the Most High has been like some old, dudded out grandfather that, that does nothing but love you and forgive you. That's not right. What the, according to the scripture, it's saying what? The Lord is a man of war. It's saying the Lord is a man of war. I don't know about you, but anybody who's been in war knows how the people of war really are. 
they are hard, they are austere, they, they tolerate very little. They don't tolerate a whole lot of mistakes like we do right now all over the earth, all over this country. When we say the Lord knows my heart, the Lord knows the heart, while we go out and smoke that weed, while we go out and pop that horn, while we go out and, and try and kill our brother, the Lord knows our heart. Yeah, he knows our heart and he is going to destroy us because we are so wicked up, up under this in this oppression. The Most High is a man of war. He will not suffer much disrespect to him. He brought us here because we are disobedient to him. Right. The characteristics of Christ right now and has always been is what? The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Right? Read that part again. So we call the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. The Lord is his name. And in and, and Hebrew is called his name is Yahweh. Give me John chapter 14 and 7. And we want to get into some more characteristics of Christ. Because everything that we've learned about Christ is is he some hippie that wears, you know, uh, long robes and, and has long stringy hair. And he wants to love and hug and kiss everybody. But like I said, the Most High, the Christ is just like the Most High. And the Most High is a man of war. How many warlords or, or soldiers out there that's going around giving grown men hugs and kisses? I don't know, not nail one of them. But you will find something like that all up in the Christian church. Because they have nothing to do with Christ. Nothing to do with Christ ever. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 7. If ye had known me, he's saying, if ye had known me, what? If ye had known me, ye should have known my father. Just like I said in the, uh, in the earlier scripture, Christ emulates our father, our power, and that's the most high God. Christ, is, what letter, what color uh, words are these? Red. These are written in red letters. If anybody know anything about the Bible, Anything that's written in red is coming from Christ. Read that from the top one more time. Come, come. Book of John, chapter 14, verse 7. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. He said, if you know him, if you know Christ, you should have known his Father also. His Father is our Father, is our power. And the scripture we just read before that clearly states that the Most High is a man of war. If you know the, if you know Christ, then you know his father. His father, the Most High, is a man of war. Equally, Christ is a man of war. Everything that you learn about Christ that you have that you haven't heard from us has everything to do with being effeminate and weak and lily livered. Has everything to do with that. How many you ask a Christian, and Christians love to say this. Christians absolutely love to say this. They say, I have a close and personal relationship with, with Christ and with God. If you were hanging out with your friends, with your boys, with your mans in them, how many of you are actually saying, I have a close and personal relationship with them? If you hear that from somebody, you think they kind of a little funny. They got their little zesty. What man has a close and personal relationship with another man? That's not, that's not the way the scripture, the scripture is. That's not the way how the way Christ is being described. Christ is being described as what? If ye had known me, ye, know, ye should have known my father also. And the most high is nothing but a man of war. He doesn't have no close and personal relationship with no man. If you're in a Christian church, you need to get up out of there and save your manhood and your, and your sanity. Right. Bring back beards, bring back boots, bring back some masculinity in this world. Keep going. Oh God. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. From this and from that, because if you knew me, you knew the Most High. And because you know me, you know the Most High. You know how the Most High is. Keep reading. Oh God. Verse 8. Philip saith unto him. Philip is one of his disciples. He was following Christ around. He knew how the way Christ was. Why are they asking these questions about the Most High if they following Christ around for years, day in, day out? 
If you if you are with somebody 24 hours a day, seven days a week for for a number of years, you know how the way they are. So why are they asking these questions? The scripture says, what is written a fourth time is written for our learning. We are to learn from what they are asking about. So Philip, one of the disciples is asking, what? Philip said unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it suffices us. So he, after he just told him, he just told him, if you see me, you see the Father. That's what he just said. Right? So why is he asking, show us the Father and will and will be suffice? But this is this is how cold it gets. This is what the what Christ told him. I mean, Christ saith unto him, I have been so long time with you, and yet hast thou known me. See, just like I said, if you're with somebody 24 hours a day, seven days a week, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. How long have I been with you and you don't know what in the world I'm talking about? Come on, keep going. He, he that has seen me has seen the Father. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Why are you asking me? Give me Revelations 1 and 1. Revelations chapter 1 and 1 and I'm going to tell you what, how the Bible actually describes Christ. I'm going to tell you how the Bible describes Christ and then you Look on, look on TV and look in your mama's house, your grandmother's house, and all these other images of how the way Christ has been portrayed. And you tell me who's lying. These, these loud ass niggas, these niggas on the block, or actually your Christian pastor. Who's lying? The Pope or Commander Giuliano? Your Bible or this Bible? Which is actually the same. All you have to do is interpret it properly. Read what you got. Book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Christ. Read that from just like it said. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The, rev the revelation of Jesus Christ. Right there in the beginning of the very first verse of the very first chapter book, chapter of this book, it tells you it is revealing something. Who is it revealing? It's revealing Christ. Jesus Christ, the revealing of Jesus Christ is going to tell you exactly how he looks like and how he actually acts like. Keep going. Which God gave unto him to shew unto his service, to show unto his service. He's actually show the most high is showing us so that he so that so that we can actually show everybody else the truth of this Bible. Because the truth is we've been lied to ever since we got, we were brought over here on slave ships. Ever since our oppressor came over here on the Santa, the Penta, uh, the Santa, the Nina, and the Penta. Read that part from the top. I'm called the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Things that which must surely come to pass. These things will happen. Get me, drop me down to verse 12. Book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 12. And I turn to thee the voice that spake with me. So this is John the, Re the, the Revelator who was in, uh, um, who, was, who was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. He heard a voice and he turned around, and this is what he saw. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Right. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, right, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, each of those candlesticks uh, are, 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 it represents one of the seven churches in Asia Minor. So this is what he's saying. He's seeing somebody in the midst, in the middle of these seven candlesticks, right? One like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the Son of Man. In verse 1, we're talking about the revealing of Jesus Christ. So he sees someone in the midst of the seven candlesticks, and he says, look, that's the Son of Man. Another name, nickname for the Son of Man is Christ. He is talking about Christ right here, right now. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. He said he's clothed with a garment down to the foot. 
A garment is what this brother has on right here. He had on a garment that was down to the foot, right? Keep going. And girt about the path with a golden girdle. And girt about the path with a girt, golden girdle. In modern times, what you want to, what you, what you want to imagine is, right at that at that time, the golden girdle, a girdle, was to protect your midsection against swords and and, and other uh, weapons. In modern times, you could think of that as a bulletproof vest. Christ had on something similar to a bulletproof vest to protect him from anything that was coming coming up from him. Right? Now, why in the world would someone who was all about peace wear something sort of like a bulletproof vest? If he's all about peace and he's come to give hugs and kisses and everybody loves him and everything, why is he coming dressed for war? Why is that? You want to know why is that? Because we have been subjugated under white supremacy all of our lives. And everything that we learned about Christ, has we have learned from our oppressor. We have learned from the slave master. And the slave master told us that our king is nothing but a weak, soft hippie that likes to smoke. And he likes to, and he likes to love and forgive everybody. But that is not true. Why? Because the very first verse I brought out was, the Most High is a man of war. The second verse, his, he says it out of his own mouth, if you see me, you see the Father. The Most High is a man of war, thus Christ is a man of war. If we are really followers of Christ, we should be men of war. I'd rather die like a man, than live like a coward There's a ghetto up in heaven and the silence Black power, uh, 144,000 I'm just trying to make 144,000 144,000 I'm just trying to make 144,000 One body, one face, one lord Feel like I can take over the world with one sword 144,000 men on one accord Not being in this army is something can't afford it, real niggas across the board, ain't no suckers round us You was looking for the truth, well that's how you found us Now it's time to lace your boots up We got the order from the king, round the troops up Let's go to war and die defending this nation If we got to ain't no stopping us now The chosen people love the power, standing strong like a man Cause in our camp it ain't no cowards, honey for it for grand Nigga is step before the song Rather die like a man than live like a coward There's a ghetto up in heaven and it's ours I'd rather die